A new study has revealed that the Pfizer vaccine provides less immunity to the Omicron variant than other strains of COVID-19. However, South African researchers say a third dose of the vaccine still offers a degree of protection against the highly mutated variant. Joining us now for more is Sam Fazeli, Head of Research for Bloomberg Intelligence. Sam, very good to have you with us. I'm interested in your broad picture take on what we've heard so far. Important to say this is not from Pfizer themselves. This is uh, some research in South Africa, though, the epicenter of the Omicron outbreak. I'm interested in what it says to you, and specifically I'm interested because they, 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 in, the, in the level of uh, uh, utility, I suppose, for this vaccine, because they say it's going to be less effective against Omicron, but they've compared it to the original strain of COVID-19, and we know that these vaccines already had proven themselves a little less effective against some of the uh, more recent strains. So what's your overall view? Yeah, good morning, Anna. Um, first of all, I want to really congratulate the scientists for getting this data out so quickly. And the tests were done against live virus, not some engineered version that looks like the current virus. So that uh, is an amazing uh, achievement. Um, <clears throat> I'm not reading this data as positively as, as some people seem to be. The 41.4-fold reduction in the ability of vaccinated blood to neutralize this variant is pretty much three times higher than we saw with the beta variant. And let's not forget, if you look at the detail, this is blood from people who were vaccinated just two weeks before so that they would be at the most highest level of antibody that they could possibly have. So I, I think we should be very careful in interpreting this as that it provides, with two shots at least, any kind of shield. I suspect within a month or two after vaccination, you'd probably have pretty much nothing in terms of protection against an infection. Now, will boosters help? Well, they have some other data that suggests that perhaps boosters will give you the level of antibodies that should be able to neutralize for a while. And then, of course, you have the possibility of a new vaccine for Omicron. <laughs> Sam, I thought I was reading this story negatively, and you've made me even more gloomy again, saying that double vaccination won't really provide that much help, and we really need boosters. Uh, another question I want to focus on, because I, I do think the market has been confused, being so optimistic about this report. The other part is that I would have thought that given the lag in illness after initially contracting the disease, that we're going to have much more confidence on the contagious element, uh, or how contagious the Omicron variant is, before we're going to have any confidence about what the impact is in terms of uh, severity of disease. Is that correct or is that wrong? Will we find it out all the same time just by testing uh, what the protein looks like? Yeah, no, no, Mark, you're, you're, you're very right there. It would, it would be, I think, soon or already we have a feel that this is a much more transmissible virus. But don't forget that if, if, if the data's right and you don't have much protection from a previous infection or a double vaccination or double shot, then that adds to the issue that those people aren't protected. You'll see more infections. And remember, please, we're talking about infections here, not disease severity. And that's, that's driven by a whole other area of the immune system. And I suspect that we'll have a good level of protection against severe disease, even with two shots. But that data, as you rightly say, will take some time to come. So I think we already have a good feel that it's more transmissible. Um, uh, or it is fitter and, and, if, and more infectious, but whether the severity is worse or less, et cetera, et cetera. I think this week and mm. next is when we'll find out that information, probably most likely out of South Africa again. OK, what a festive gift for us all then, uh, Sam, depending on which way this goes. Um, I mean, a 40-fold reduction in levels of neutralising antibodies, that's what you were referring to and su suggesting that that, that, is, that is a disappointing result then, I think you're, you're suggesting. Uh, 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 what about T cells? Because I know that this is another part of the, the body's response that we need to keep, a track, keep, keep an eye on and think about when it comes to vaccines. Yeah, we don't know. I mean, there was one study that did a computational analysis of where uh, the areas of the, of the virus that T cells attack, where those known areas are, and whether those are mutated in Omicron. And they found that, again, a relatively high, a relatively high 30% were potentially impacted. But that still leaves 70%. And T cells are pretty good at just like antibodies are, e evolving. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful that that part of the immune system 
will still give us pretty good protection against severe disease. But you know, Anna, one of the problems is if this is more infectious as we expect, when you have very large numbers of people being infected, and a lot of people have said this, then you do still see pressure on healthcare systems by the sheer volume, mm. even if the severity is a lower percentage.